So, very good morning, friends. As we know, ICA has recently released a guidance note on uh, bank audit. I was reading the provisions relating to agricultural advances and I thought, let me make a video on this so that it could be beneficial for all. So, here is the inputs on the advances in agricultural sector. As we already know, agriculture has always been the backbone of Indian economy, uh, despite sustained uh, progress in industrial and service sector. And there are many industries which are indirectly dependent upon agriculture, like handloom, weaving, rice, deer skin, cotton, sugar, textiles. And a lot of professionals are engaged in the audit of rural sector branches where agricultural advances are predominant. So agricultural credit is uh, considered as one of the most basic inputs for conducting all agricultural development programs. And definitely there is a growing need for proper agricultural credit in India. This uh, uh, agricultural credit has been institutionalized with the uh, evolution of uh, various uh, banks and cooperative societies and regional rural banks, NABARD, and then there were financial sector reforms. Uh, and the government has increasingly begun to tap institutional finance from banks and other uh, long-term uh, lending institutions for financing various development programs and view the need to supplement plan financing. So banks definitely have a, a, a great role to play in this, but the credit should be utilized in a prudent manner. So the state level bankers committee, which was constituted by RBI under the lead bank scheme, it periodically takes up the review performance and monitors progress under special schemes. So at the district level, the district consultative committee with the chief executive officer of Jila Panchayat as chairperson and representatives of financial institutions and heads of government departments at the district level as members, they monitor the implementation of government sponsored schemes and service area credit plans. At the block level, block level bankers committee chaired by lead district manager with bank managers and departmental heads of government at block level as members, they periodically review the implementation of government sponsored schemes and service areas, credit plans and this sort of problems encountered in the implementation. So basically government is also reviewing periodically the performance under the lead bank scheme through state level bankers committee which was constituted by the RBI. The RBI has classified lending to the agriculture and allied activities under priority sector lending. So this agriculture advances, they come under priority sector lending and commercial banks are guided by priority sector lending policy of providing credit to various deserving se sectors or sections, including agriculture and allied activities. So with a view to regulate and encourage the flow of agricultural credit by all scheduled commercial banks, RBI from time to time, they issue guidelines or instructions or directives to banks on Priority sector lending. Priority sector lending program has been an integral part of the banking policy in India and this scheme is intended to give loans to the important sectors of the economy, agriculture, small scale industries in such a way uh, so as to ensure maximum credit flow to the last man in the last village of the country through a strong banking network. So priority sector lending includes a sub-target for lending to the weaker sections of the society within the private sector, priority sector. So within the priority sector also, weaker sections are identified and there is a sub-target for lending. Now, meaning of priority sector and priority sector advances. This priority sector refers to those sectors of the economy which may not get timely and adequate credit in the absence of this special dispensation. So priority sector advances are small value loans to farmers for agricultural and allied activities micro and small enterprises, poor people for housing, students for education and other low income groups and weaker sections. So in terms, if you go through the RBI master circular uh, on priority sector lending to so targets and classification, the categories under priority sector are as under and agricultural is on the top. And the targets and sub targets for agriculture set under priority sector lending for all scheduled commercial banks operating in India are given below. So total priority sector is 40% of the ANBC as computed in para 6 of RBI master circular. Agricultural forms 18% of the ANBC or CEOBE, whichever is higher. And additionally, 
So out of 40% of the priority sector lending, lending to agricultural sector is 18%. Additionally, domestic banks are directed to ensure that the overall lending to non-corporate farmers does not fall below the system-wide average of the last three years' achievement and the applicable target for lending to the non-corporate farmers for financial year 22-23 will be 13.78%. So, out of 18, 13.78 will be the uh, target for the non-corporate farmers. So this thing we have to keep in mind for micro enterprises 7.5% advances to weaker sections is 12%. And the targets for lending to small and medium firms and uh, for weaker sections. So for small and marginal farmers, the targets for 22-23 uh, are 9.5%. Now, computation of adjusted net bank credit because this computation, as we have seen, is based on the ANBC. So, 18% of ANBC, how you will calculate this 18%? So, first thing is this. So, for the purpose of priority sector lending, ANBC denotes the outstanding bank credit in India. And it is computed as under. So, first of all, bank credit in India. Then bills rediscounted with RBI and other approved financial institutions. So this is the net bank credit. Then outstanding deposits under RIDF and other eligible funds with the BARD, NHB, SIDB and Mudra etc. In lieu of non-achievement of priority sector lending. Then eligible amount for exemptions on issuance of long-term bonds. Eligible advances extended in India against the Incremental FCNR, NRA deposits, investment made by public sector banks, other investments, face value securities acquired. So, ANBC will be the total of 3 plus 4 minus 5, 6 and 7. So, 5, 6 and 7 will be deducted. 5, 6 and 7, what are 5, 6 and 7? Eligible amount for exemptions on issuance of long-term bond for infrastructure and affordable housing. Then, Eligible advances extended in India against the incremental FCNR deposits. Then investments made by public sector banks in the recapitalization bonds floated by the government of India. So this, these three will be deducted and then eight will be added. Eight is other investments which are eligible to be treated as priority sector and then nine will be deducted. Face value of securities acquired and kept under HTM category. And then 10 bonds debentures in non slr categories under htm category so this is how the calculation of a and b c is to be done and if a bank opts to subtract a prudential write off and corporate or head office level by reporting bank credit uh, as above so bank credit to priority sector and all other subsectors so written off should also be subtracted category wise so this is how a calculation of ANBC is done. Now agricultural credit. So lending to agricultural sector includes the following. So first is the farm credit, individual farmers, which will include short-term crop loans and medium long-term credit to farmers. Then farm credit. Farm credit is to corporate farmers. Because as we've seen, the out of 18%, how much was to be given to non-corporate sector? I think 13 point something. So for, uh, yes, 13.78% for financial year 22-23. CNBC, ANBC calculation is the same. So farm credit to individual farmers, farm credit to corporate farmers. This is a total calculation is 18%. Then agriculture, infrastructure and salary services, small and marginal farmers, lending by banks to NBFCs and MFIs for all lending in agriculture. A list of eligible activities under the above subcategories is given here and there. So, farm credit. So, farm credit is loans to individual farmers, including self help groups or joint liability groups. That is, groups of individual farmers, provided banks maintain disaggregated data of such loans. 
and proprietorship firms of farmers directly engaged in agriculture and allied activities, and namely dairy, fishery, animal husbandry, poultry, beekeeping, and sericulture. So this will include crop loans to farmers, which will uh, include traditional or non-traditional plantations, and horticulture and loans for allied activities. Then medium and long-term loans to farmers for agriculture and allied activities. For example, purchase of agricultural implements and machinery and developmental loans for allied activities. Then loans for pre- and post-harvest activities. Namely spraying, harvesting, grading and transporting of their own farm produce. Then loans to distressed farmers indebted to non-institutional lenders. Then loans to farmers under the Kisan credit card scheme. Loans to small and marginal farmers for purchase of land for agricultural purposes. Loans against pledge or hypothecation of agricultural produce, including warehouse receipt for a period not exceeding 12 months. Subject to a limit up to 75 lakhs against negotiable warehouse receipts, electronic negotiable warehouse receipts, and up to 50 lakhs against warehouse receipts other than these uh, negotiable warehouse receipts or electronic negotiable warehouse receipts. Then loans to farmers for installation of standalone solar agricultural pumps and for solarization of grid connected agricultural pumps. Then loans to farmers for installation of solar water plants or barren or public fallow land or in stilt fashion on agricultural land owned by farmers. So this is the first farm credit. Now next in the line is loans to corporate farmers. So the loan to corporate farmers, farmers, producer, organizations, companies of individual farmers, partnership firms and cooperatives of farmers directly engaged in agriculture and allied activities up to an aggregate limit of 2 crores per borrower entity shall be for the following activities. So crop loans to farmers which will include traditional or non-traditional plantations and horticulture and loans for allied activities. Medium and long term loans to farmers for agriculture and allied activities, for example, purchase of agricultural implements and machinery and developmental loans for allied activities. Then loans for pre and post harvest activities, spraying, harvesting. Then loans up to 75% for this warehouse receipts and 50 lakhs against other than NWRs or NWR. Then loans up to 5 crores per borrowing entity to FPOs or FPCs undertaking. Farming with assured marketing, marketing of their produce at a predetermined price. Then it needs to be noted here that UCVs are not permitted to lend to cooperatives of farmers. So urban commercial banks, they are not permitted to lend to cooperatives of farmers. So that is another concept. Then agriculture infrastructure. So for the following loans, an aggregate sanctioned limit of rupees 100 crore per borrower from the banking system will apply. And what are the categories covered? Loans for construction of storage facilities, warehouse, market yards, go-downs and silos, including cold storage units, cold storage chains designed to store agricultural produce products irrespective of their location. Soil conservation and watershed development, plant tissue culture and agri-biotechnology, agri seed production, production of bio-pesticides, biofertilizer and vermi compost. Then loans for construction of oil extraction, Processing units for production of biofuels, their storage and distribution infrastructure, along with loans to entrepreneurs for setting up compressed biogas plants. Then ancillary services, so loans for setting up of agri clinics and agri business centers, then loans to custom service units managed by individuals or institutions or organizations which maintain a fleet of tractors, bulldozers, well boring equipment, threshers, combines, and undertake farm work for farmers on contract basis. Then bank loans to primary agricultural credit societies, farmers service societies, and large scale Adivasi multipurpose societies for on lending to agriculture. Then loans sanctioned by banks to MFIs for on lending to agriculture sector as per the conditions specified. Then loans sanctioned by banks to registered NBFCs other than MFIs as per the conditions satisfied. Next in the line is small and marginal farmers. So for the purpose of computation of achievement of the sub-target, small and marginal farmers will include the following. So farmers with land holding of up to one hectare, then farmers with land holding of more than one hectare, and up to 
two hectares, so these will be small farmers. Then landless agricultural laborers, tenant farmers, oral lessees, and sharecroppers who whose share of land holding is within the limit prescribed for small and marginal farmers, that is one hectare or two hectare. Then loans to self-help groups or joint liability groups, that is groups of individuals, small and marginal farmers directly engaged in agriculture and alliance, which provided the banks maintain disaggregated data of such loans. Then loans up to two lakhs to individuals who are solely engaged in allied activities without any accompanying land holding criteria. Then loans to FPOs or FPCs of individual farmers and cooperatives of farmers directly engaged in agriculture and allied activities where the land holding share of SMFs is not less than 75% subject to the prescribed loan limits outlined above. Then lending by banks to NBFCs and MFIs for all lending in agriculture. So bank credit, which is uh, extended to registered NBFCs, or MFIs and other MFIs, societies, trusts, etc., et which are members of RBI recognized SRO for the sector for all lending to individuals and also to members of self help groups or joint lending groups, will be uh, eligible for categorization as priority sector advance under respective categories of agriculture subject to the conditions specified. Then bank credit to registered NBFCs other than MFIs towards all lending for term lending component and under agriculture will be allowed up to rupees 10 lakhs per borrower subject to conditions specified. Next is the Kisan credit card. The salient features of the Kisan credit card scheme are as under. <clears throat> there is a circular on this uh, revised Kisan credit card scheme which was introduced by the RBI and was uh, later modified through various circulars. And what is the scheme? The scheme aims at providing adequate and timely credit support under single window to the farmers for their cultivation and other needs as in grid below. Short term credit limits to meet uh, the short term credit requirements for cultivation of crops, then post harvest expenses, then produce the marketing loan, consumption requirement of uh, farmers' household. Then working capital for maintenance of farm assets and activities allied to agriculture and long-term credit limit investment credit requirement for agriculture and allied activities. So it may be noted that Kisan credit card is not a type of loan, but is a channel for granting either short-term or long-term agricultural funds to farmers, both individuals and joint borrowers who are owner cultivators, tenant farmers, rural lessees and sharecroppers, self-help groups or joint liability groups of farmers, including tenant farmers, sharecroppers. So master circular on this KCC scheme throws more light on the following macro aspects. The two is eligible for this Kisan credit card. Then fixation of credit limit or loan amount for all farmers other than marginal farmers and for marginal farmers how disbursement takes place, issue of electronic credit, uh, Kisan credit cards, then validity of the credible, rate of interest, repayment period, security and margin. So what is the limit? So up to 1.6 lakhs against hypothecation of crops, this is primary security, and up to 3 lakhs with tie-up for recovery. This is also against hypothecation of crops. And margin, in this case, banks have to decide. But up to 1.6 lakhs, there is no margin as such. And then above 1.6 lakhs in case of non tie up and rupees 3 lakhs in case of tie up advances, it will be against the hypothecation of crops and collateral will be required. For example, land and regarding the margins, bank will be deciding this. Thing. Then other features like uh, simple documentation, then classification of account as NPA, the extent prudential norms on income recognition, asset classification, and provisioning will apply for loans granted under the KCC scheme. Then delivery channels, technical features, issue of cards, type of card, delivery channels, mobile banking, oblique, other channels. Next line is interest application. So unlike normal loans, the interest on agricultural advances is not charged at monthly risk. This is important but it's charged as per the instructions contained in circular. Then interest on current use, that is crop loans and installments not fallen due, in respect of term loans, in respect of direct agricultural advances, should not be compounded. So that is another thing regarding interest application. So we have to keep in mind the interest, how interest is applied in case of agricultural advances. So this is somewhat different from the normal loans. 
and RBI by the circular on charging of interest at monthly rests has informed the bank that the instructions regarding charging of interest on monthly rests shall not be applicable to agriculture advances and banks shall continue to follow the existing practice of charging or compounding of interest on agriculture advances linked to crop seasons. Then examples of interest application according to crop seasons and for other activities. So this depends on the disbursement period because there are two disbursement period. One is April to September and then is October to March. So for the first crop season, for the Kharif, it will be the due date fixed for repayment. And for Rabi, also this will be the due date fixed for repayment and compounding will start after the due date in both Kharif and Rabi season and penal interest will be charged from the date the loan becomes overdue. Regarding allied activities, for uh, dairy or poultry, it is quarterly and for goat rearing, piggery, it is half yearly or yearly. Repayment, interest application, interest application date. So normally, all these activities are quarterly in case of dairy or uh, poultry farming and uh, in case of goat rearing or piggery, it is half yearly or yearly. Now, interest subvention. So, public, public, private sector, scheduled commercial banks in respect of loans given by the rural and semi-urban branches are eligible under the interest subvention scheme. On a loan given at 7% interest, subvention of 2% per annum is allowed to banks on their own funds used for short-term crop loans up to rupees 3 lakhs per farmer. So, interest subvention up to 2% is allowed on a loan given at 7% interest rate. So short term credit thus made available at 7% per annum to farmers is considered for interest subvention. So this is calculated on the crop loan amount from the date of its disbursement drawn up to the date of actual repayment of the crop loan by the farmer or up to the due date of the loan fixed by the tax, whichever is earlier, subject to a maximum period of one year. And the process of uh, passing on the interest subvention amount to the closed account should be reviewed. From 2011-12, additional interest subvention of 3% is available to those farmers who repay their short-term crop loans promptly and on or before the due date. So farmers who promptly repay their crop loans as per the repayment schedule fixed by the banks are offered loans at an effective interest rate of 4%. So 7% minus 3%. So RBI by its circular number, uh, uh, this dated November 23, 2022 on modified interest submission scheme. So what they have done is, so they have linked the Aadhaar linkage also mandatory for availing the short term crop loans in 2022, 23 and 23, 24. So we have to keep in mind that Aadhaar linkage is there for uh, this 2022, 23 and 23, 24. Then there is another circular uh, which talks of uh, this short term crop loans eligible for interest subvention scheme and prompt repayment incentive through Kisan credit card. So it states that all short term crop loans eligible for interest subvention and prompt repayment incentive benefit are extended only through KCC with effect from April 1, 2020. So the existing short term crop loans which are not extended through KCC shall be converted to KCC loans by March 31, 2020, but it's of historical importance and it says that uh, now the benefit will be available only through Kisan credit card. Then RBI, uh, while the circular dated November 23, 2022 on modified interest subvention scheme for short term loans for agriculture and allied activities through KCC during financial year 20, 22, 23 and 23, 24 has decided that interest subvention will be available on an overall limit of 3 lakhs per annum, subject to a maximum sub-limit of 2 lakhs per farmer in respect of those farmers involved only in activities related to animal husbandry, dairy, fisheries, beekeeping, etc. So interest subvention is available only up to 3 lakhs, subject to a maximum sub-limit of 2 lakhs per farmer in respect of those activities involved only in activities related to animal husbandry, dairy, fishery, bee etc. And the limit for crop loan component will take priority for interest subvention and prompt repayment incentive benefits and the residual amount will be considered towards allied activities including this. 
So additional uh, subvention uh, is available in respect of short-term crop loans, also affected by natural calamity. So in this case, in case of a natural calamity, an interest subvention of 2% per annum shall be made available to banks for the first year on the restructured loan amount and such restructured loans shall attract normal rate of interest from the second year onward. So for the first year, interest subvention of 2% is available. However, in case of severe natural calamities, 2% subvention will be made available to banks for the first three years or public uh, entire period subject to a maximum of five years. Now, there is an interest subvention scheme for post-harvest loans also. So, the interest subvention scheme has been extended to small and marginal farmers having Kisan credit card for the further period up to six months post-harvest against negotiable warehouse receipts for keeping their produce in warehouses. So, this is in order to discourage distress sale by farmers and to encourage them to store their produce in warehouse against warehouse receipts of warehouses accredited with Warehousing Development Regulatory Authority not in these private warehouses. So the warehouses should also be accredited with Warehousing Development Regulatory Authority. Now auditors have to submit a certificate of interest subvention along with annual accounts of the branch audited by them. Further, all short-term crop loans processed during 2018-19 are required to be brought on ISS portal, DBT platform and banks are advised to capture and submit category-wise data of beneficiaries under the scheme and report the same on ISS portal individual farmer wise once it is launched to settle the claims arising from 2018-19 onwards. Now what is the audit procedure? What it has to be seen? For details of short term crop loans qualifying sub for subvention, obtain information in these formats, format 1, 2, 3 and 4 which are given uh, after this uh, uh, chapter submitted by the branch to head office or submitted by bank to RBI. Also refer the guidance notes on reports or certificate for special purpose for suitably modifying the format of the certificate. And the auditor has to verify that the book credit entries are not passed for the purpose of availing the interest subvention. So the auditor also has to verify that the book credit entries are not passed for the purpose of availing the interest subvention. Then you have to obtain the list of eligible borrowers with interest rate charge to the account, obtain the working sheet of interest subvention and verify the same, obtain list of all advances appearing in these formats having necessary particulars like date of sanction, due date, actual rate of repayment, actual ROI and effective ROI etc. Then you have to verify that the interest is first credited to the account and then a claim is made for reimbursement for 3% prompt repayment subvention. Then you have to check the following in respect of cases verified. How the limit of 3 lakhs per borrower is verified for claim purposes. Only the cases where prompt repayment has been received as given the benefit of interest subvention of 3%. Inquire about any rejection made in earlier risk claims and reasons therefore and whether proper accounting is done for the same in branch book. So uh, earlier is earlier's rejection also you have to see. And you have to see that whether the amount was debited to the proper uh, loan account or not. So as per RBI circular, the auditor needs to certify the correctness of the claim and hence substant substantive testing needs to be carried out for examination because if you are giving a certificate, then you have to examine it thoroughly. As per the extent RBI guidelines, long duration crops would be crops with crop season longer than one year and crops which are not long duration crops will be treated as short duration crops. So long duration crops are those crops which have a crop duration of more than one year. And the short, short duration crops are those who, which are not long duration. The crop season for each crop, which means the period up to harvesting of the crops race, would be as determined by the state level bankers committee in each state, depending upon the duration of crops raised by an agriculturalist. Now, state level bankers committee, because state level bankers committee is the committee which is responsible for monitoring the agricultural finance. So, agricultural finance, so we have seen the uh, provisions regarding interest subvention, eligibility, criteria, etc, etc. Priority sector lending, how priority sector lending is to be calculated. Now, let us see some of the provisions regarding the state level bankers committee, what it says. So, agricultural finance 
is supervised and monitored by the state level makers committee and its decisions are implemented by all making sector having branches in the state. So every state has its own SLBC and guidelines have been issued to banks to develop agricultural finance. So the state level bankers committee is an inter-institutional forum for coordination and joint implementation of development programs and policies. So they will decide the crop season for each crop, which effectively means the period up to harvesting of the crop rate and the banks of the respective state, they have to add it to the crop season as decided by the state level bankers committee of that state. So practically in Baker, the same crop may have different harvesting season in different states as decided by the state level bankers committee. So in these cases, the auditor needs to verify whether the banks have the requisite mechanism to map the crop seasons vis-a-vis -vis the crop seasons as defined by the SLBC of each state as any discrepancies may have a direct impact on identification of NPS. So the auditors are advised to refer to the guidelines issued by the state level bankers committee of the state wherein the branch under the audit is located. So guidelines issued by the SLBC of respective states should be available at the branches and the branch auditor should refer to the same and ensure its attendance. So even you can do some internet uh, surfing and you can go on to the state level bankers committee website or the page uh, uh, to find out okay, what are their recommendations. So RBA classification to the Maharashtra state level bankers committee. A loan may be treated as NPA immediately on completion of two crop season or one crop season as the case may be depending on the duration of the crops after the repayment due date. So two crop seasons after the due date should refer to only those two consecutive crop seasons in which the farmer usually undertakes crop production. So crop season for each crop means the period up to the harvesting of the crops. So at asset classification norms assume that there is normal crop yield during the season for which the credit is extended. So hence immediately after consecutive two harvest seasons, as per the cultivation pattern followed by the farmer borrower from repayment due date, the count is to be identified as NPA as per the revised guidelines. In case the yield is affected by natural calamities as declared by the state government, the loan accounts should be restructured or reshaped. Now examples of NPA identification, how uh, an auditor will identify the NPA in agricultural advances. This is very important. So a loan granted for short duration crops will be treated as NPA if the installment of principal and interest thereon remains overdue for two crop seasons. And a loan granted for long duration crops will be treated as NPA if the installment of principal and interest thereon remains overdue for one crop season. And for the purpose of these guidelines, long duration crops would be crops with crop season longer than one year and crops which are not long duration crops would be treated as short duration crops. And the crop season for each crop, which means the period of two harvesting, would be determined by the state level, by uh, this uh, bankers committee in each state. So depending upon the duration of the crops raised, the above NPA norms would also be made applicable to agricultural term loans availed by it. So naturally, where natural calamities, where uh, natural calamities are there and they are impairing the repayment capacity. So for that, uh, interest submission will be there. Non, uh, they, they will be rescheduling of the repayment period. And in such cases of conversion or rescheduling, the term loan as well as the fresh short term loan may be treated as current dues and need not be classified as NPA. And the asset classification of these loans would thereafter be governed by the revised norms. This is also important as regards gold loans granted for agricultural purposes. Interest is required to be charged as per the Supreme Court's judgment at yearly intervals and payment should coincide with the harvesting of crops. Accordingly, such advances will be treated as NP only if the installments of principal and or interest becomes overdue after the period. So regarding gold loans, separate treatment is given as per the Supreme Court's judgment. While fixing the repayment schedule in case of rural housing advances granted to agriculturalists under Indra Avas Yojana and Golden Jubilee Rural Housing Finance Scheme, banks should ensure that the interest or oblique installment repayable on such advances are linked to crop cycles. So these are the examples of NP classification. They depend upon the sanction date and they depend upon the uh, crop, whether it is short-term crop or long-term crop.
So what you have to consider is the sanction date. You have to see the harvesting date, then repayment due date and interest the submission. Then date of irregularity. It will also depend upon the multiple or double cropping pattern or single or monocropping center. Now regarding these allied activities. So for allied activities, so you have to make a distinction between dairy, goat rearing, piggery and poultry. So for dairy, it is quarterly and for poultry, it is quarterly. But for goat rearing and piggery, it is half yearly or yearly, normally. Now, what are the key points in auditing agricultural advances? The audit approach for agricultural advances has to be on similar lines as in the case of other advances. So, following is the summary of key aspects. First is, the sanctioned amount of agricultural loans should be as per the scale of finance applicable to the land under cultivation and the crop being cultivated. So, what you have to see, scale of finance applicable to the land under cultivation and the crop being cultivated. Further, appropriate security should be obtained as per the guidelines framed by the banks. Then auditors should verify that the agricultural credit is extended only after obtaining no dues or no objection certificate from the existing credit agencies in the areas of finance. So NOC from the existing credit agencies in the area of finance is required. Then disbursement of agricultural finance is required to be carried out at various stages based on the requirements of farming activity. So this has to be ensured strictly in some cases Expenditure is incurred by the farmer from his or her own sources or by the raising loans from non-institutional or private lenders and subsequently banks are requested to reimburse the same. So in such cases, the auditors have to carefully verify the facts from the documents or oblique evidence available on record. Under all situations, the auditors should verify that the bank holds documents evidencing the utilization of loans for agricultural activities. For crop loans, the primary security is normally the standing crops under cultivation. So as such, pre and post sanctions visit by the officers of the bank who are experts in agricultural finance and adequate documentation of visit report is a key control. So you have to keep adequate documentation and you have to keep a report of the visit by a person who is expert in agricultural finance. So while verifying the security offered for agricultural loans, it is to be confirmed that the security is legally enforceable. So standing crops and agricultural machinery and implements are secured by a hypothecation crop. Uh, because as per transfer of property act, we know the standing crops are movable property. So while the agricultural land is secured by a mortgage charge. So auditors have to ensure that among others, the following have been duly taken on record by the bank. So first, you have to take the copy of the land revenue extracts uh, with bank charges recorded. Then land tax assessment and payment received. Copy of record with subregistrar, original copies of the title deeds. Then search of the title deeds and legal opinion from the advocate on the bank's approved panel. Then valuation of land from a valuer on the bank's approved panel. So this valuation and documentation you have to see. Then loans granted to farmers against the security of NSC, Kisan Vikas Patram or fixed deposits of banks which have been utilized for agricultural purposes allowed to be classified under the category of finance to agriculture under priority sector at schedule 9. However, auditors should carefully verify the loan documents and other supporting documents to ensure that non-agricultural loans are not classified as agricultural finance. Then agricultural advances are required to be serviced. So basically the purpose has to be seen. Agricultural advances are required to be serviced through realization of sale proceeds of crops. So auditors should be skeptical about the nature and timing of credits coming in to service the agricultural loans and ensure that they are from genuine sources. And it needs to be specially identified that non-agricultural advances are not tagged as agricultural advances to get benefit of classification of agricultural advances. The auditor should specifically check the same. Now let us see something about the agricultural advances which are affected by natural calamities. And there are various circulars on this. And they say that these will be rescheduled and they will be restructured. Additional finance will be granted to natural calamities treated as standard assets will be covered by the terms and conditions of its sanction. So different dues from the borrower, current dues, dues which are not restructured will be classified under different asset classification norms. So this is an accepted departure from the basic principle of IRAC norms 
that is NPA should be borrower wise and not facility wise. So here it is to be facility wise. So this is a departure from the IRC norms. So in uh, such cases of uh, conversion or rescheduling, the term loan as well as the fresh short term loan may be treated as current loans and need not be classified as NPA. So this you have to see. And in case of receipt of claim of crop insurance, the insurance proceeds should ideally compensate the losses. Under the Prime Minister Fasal Bhima Yojana, all seasonal agricultural operations loans for notified crops and notified areas are to be compulsorily provided insurance cover for all stages of the crop cycle, including post-harvest risk in specified instances. So there are further ancillary measures prescribed by RBI for providing relief in terms of relaxation of KYC norms, providing access to banking services. Then collateral free agricultural loans. So let us see that uh, the limit for collateral free uh, agricultural loans has been raised from 1 lakh to 1.60 lakhs. Now agricultural debt relief and waiver schemes. So there are various state and central government debt waiver or relief schemes which are implemented for providing and auditor should go through those schemes. And what is the audit procedure? They will obtain the copy of the relevant scheme and bank circular. Then they will obtain the list of eligible borrowers with outstanding balance. So first thing for the auditor to see is whether there is any such scheme, agricultural debt relief or waiver. If there is no such scheme uh, in the state, or by the center for the branch or the, for the uh, agricultural advances, then he can skip this also. But if there is any such scheme, then he has to apply these audit procedures. So he has to obtain a copy of the relevant scheme and bank circular. He will obtain the list of eligible borrowers without turning balance and he will check the claim amount statement submitted to regional office or zonal office for claiming the scheme. And he will check the accounting entries passed for the credit of eligible amount in the account of the borrower and he will verify the accounting of interest and other charges to be borne by the lending institution as per the scheme. So these are the things, other important points. So this uh, tagging of priority sector lending towards agricultural advances should be specially verified and checked to ensure that the same are as per RBI guidelines. Then land holding. Land holding being the deciding criteria for an agricultural loan to an individual farmer, a company whose objects are farming, shall not qualify for agricultural loan in that category. That is not a farm producer company and none of its directors hold any land. So this has to be seen. So they will be covered under corporate farming, not individual farming. So loans given for the purchase of vehicles, it should come under commercial vehicle loan category. For purchase of tractors, loan can be given as agricultural term loan. So this has to be seen. Then loans to fishermen for purchase of trawlers, boats, etc. can be considered. Then self-help groups and this uh, joint liability groups where farmers are members of the group or they qualify for agricultural loans. So further loans are categorized according to the activities carried out by the groups and purpose for which the loans are taken. And if term deposits are given by farmers to primary agricultural societies, which are deposited in banks, the societies qualify for loans against the deposits. So in some cases, the, it, the lending is done through primary agricultural societies. And if term deposits are given by the farmers to these primary agricultural societies, and which are deposited in banks, the societies, they qualify for loans against the deposits. So primary agricultural society can back to back give loans to the member farmers. So all this was about the agricultural advances and these are the various formats. Uh, claim for 1.5% subvention. This certificate has to be given by the CA. Then category wise claim for 1.5% subvention. So these are the various formats which you can go through. And... Uh, in this sec, and this is one time claim for additional 3% subvention. Format 3 is uh, claim for 1.5% interest subvention for short term loans to farmers for animal or husbandry. And this is for 3% prompt repayment subvention. So this was all about uh, 
agricultural advances i hope you enjoyed the session and uh, so once you read this as i read it just now there are certain questions which are coming in my mind and i will try to uh, frame a checklist also for audit of these agricultural advances and you can also share the inputs in the comments section uh, based on uh, the uh, knowledge you got by reading along with me this guidance note on bank audit which has recently uh, been issued by the uh, ICAI.